Can you grow directly in wood chips? The answer is yes, but, and there is a but. And can you use wood chips to suppress weeds? Yes, you can, but there's also a but. G'day, I'm Gary. I live in Southern California. My wife, Robbie, and I use organic methods to garden, and we use a little bit of permaculture to help us garden. We're trying to make our gardening easy, or as easy as we can. Before I left Australia around 30 years ago, I had a half decent garden, but when I moved here, I went away from growing vegetables for a while. It was too much work and I didn't have a lot of time. So when I discovered the Back to Eden method on YouTube, I was hooked. I started gardening again. I started looking into gardening seriously around five years ago, and four years ago, I got my first loads of wood chips in. Now, there's been a few comments and questions as to whether you can grow in wood chips, and I've been able to grow directly into wood chips. In this video, I'll cover some of the places in our yard, other than in my garden, where there are wood chips, and what I've found in my garden is coming true in nature, so I'll show a few examples kind of in nature, in our main yard, where plants are actually growing only in wood chips. I'm referring to arborist wood chips. Now these wood chips here are wood chips that are created by tree trimming services. So when they go in, they have a job to do, they prune trees, the branches, the limbs, and the leaves all get put through a wood chipping machine that condenses it down so they can put more material into their trucks so they don't have to drive it away as often. So that's a business reason they're doing it. And what they're left with is this byproduct that we can use in our gardens. What I think I'll do now is go up to the top of the hill and I'll show you some examples that I've found in nature that verify my findings or what I've seen in my own garden. This area here is just outside of Robbie's garden. It's the back of the house and we're using it as a parking lot. So the wood chips that I've put down here are a little larger. The loads that I've been getting in have varied a lot and the ones that are more woody or have more heartwood in it I've generally used for laying down in areas where I don't want it to break down very quickly. So this whole area here, I don't have to string trim anymore. We don't own a lawnmower, we don't have a lawn. So most of what I have to cut, all the weeds and the grass that I cut, I use a string trimmer on. Up along the retaining wall here, I left wood chips all the way along until I got down to this point here, the tree line. I ran out of wood chips and the weeds are growing back up there. This whole area here will have a few scattered weeds from time to time, but they're not really an issue. I just have to pop them out as I see them come up or leave them be and they're not really as vigorous as they should be. So when the surface area of the wood chips dry up, they'll end up dying off. I believe this one here might be hair barley. It's kind of got a little bit of a bluish tinge to the leaf and that's growing in straight wood chips. Because the wood chips here are starting to dry from the surface down, it's not getting enough water, so it's not growing that vigorously. There are a few other plants that we leave for the goldfinches and we eat ourselves. Some of the weeds that we like to leave are sow thistle. We've got a few of those growing. They're a really good plant in an arid environment. They do a lot better than dandelion. Dandelion does come up here, but because we don't get summer rain, they die off pretty quickly. Lack of water keeps them short. So we're kind of lucky in some ways that we're in a Mediterranean climate and because we're in a Mediterranean climate, we don't get the summer rain. 
So if you're in an area where you get a lot more rain over the warmer months, you're going to have a wider variety of weeds. So our weed situation here is kind of limited. There's another sow thistle. Sow thistle have the yellow flowers and they also have the seeds that blow in the wind. So this whole area here is pretty much clear and weed free. I do have a few things that come up that I don't want. I'm not sure what this one is, but it can come out really easily. Up along the top of the retaining wall, there's a distinct line between where I laid down the wood chips and where I didn't. So the weeds that are growing here, if you picture what this whole area up here used to look like, I used to string trim all along here and now I'll only have to do this small area up here. The main weeds growing up there are hair barley and rip gut brome. Both of those are harmful to your pets and other livestock, so I want to make sure that I get to that before they start to dry off because the seed oils are designed to drill into the soil and you can imagine what they can do to your pets. So because we have dogs, I want to keep that under control. Some of the seeds last year came down from the retaining wall and they started to grow along here. They're not really a problem. The wood chips are here have been sitting for a couple of years. This is an area where I got one of my first loads in. So this is probably still a foot deep and the surface of the wood chips have already started to dry up and the weeds are starting to die off here. I do have another area that I'm going to go to next and that's across the hill here. It gets a lot more moisture over there than it does here. Along here I've planted a couple of aloes. I've planted those mainly for the flowers because they are good for attracting hummingbirds. David Holmgren's another Aussie coined the phrase permaculture in the 1970s. He came up with 12 design principles that you can use for permaculture. The design principle number one is one that's relevant to here, observe and interact. So I've been observing this area here where I've left the grass grow on this side of the hill. This area here is going to be catchment, it's going to collect water, and it's going to flow down the hill and into this area here. This area here I'm setting up to grow some trees. They're going to be guamachil trees. The grass that's growing up here, again that's rip gut brome mostly, is starting to grow into the wood chips. It's trying to revegetate this bare area. If I pull the grass out, this is growing in pure wood chips. Now this area here is a lot better hydrated because the water is still coming down from the hill. So this is going to stay wetter for longer and this grass is likely to eventually go to seed and move further down the hill. I can stop that by either covering it or just pulling it out and it's very easy to pull out. It's no effort at all. You just have to grab it and it's gone. Some people don't believe that you can grow anything in wood chips, but they're perhaps talking about other types of wood chips. Arboreal wood chips that are decomposing are very suitable for anything to grow, even grass. Now that's going against some people's ideas of what you can and cannot grow in, but I'm just making an observation here. I've been working with this for a little over four years. I'm making my observations, I'm testing things out, 
and I'm convinced that you can grow directly in wood chips, providing that it is broken down or decomposed enough that will allow life to move back into it. If you try to do this too soon, it would be worthless. Think about growing something in a salad. If you took a fresh salad, chopped it up into small pieces, planted a seed in it, nothing's going to grow. But if you took the same salad, you composted it, then planted a seed in it, it's going to take off. So what I think a lot of people are confusing the issue with growing in wood chips is they're not waiting long enough for it to break down so that life can come back into it. I've got a couple of other areas down in the gully here that I'm going to show. I had a staging area there where I had the piles of wood chips. I brought them across here. I built a bridge to get across the V channel and that allowed me to bring in the rest of the wood chips and carry them along the hillside here. So I've got them laid down pretty thick along here. This area here, I can't lay wood chips down because it's too steep. So I've planted some more aloe vera. I'm going to plant some other plants along there. So I've got a few weeds coming up there. I'm not really concerned about that. Here's my driveway that I bring my truck down. And there's quite a few weeds growing along here. Again, it's not much of a problem. I just have to come in with a string trimmer later on and work on that. One of the plants that I like to have around are stinging nettles. I use those in my tea from time to time and it also makes really good compost tea. There's another distinct line here between where the wood chips are laid down and where the grass is growing. Got a few volunteers coming up here. I've got a cherry tomato that came up. That's growing straight in the soil. Some of the weeds that have been brought in from the wind are the thistles, and they're easy enough to get out. Things like this, you want to get out early before they set their root into the mineral soil. So this right now is just growing in wood chips, and the wood chips here are laid down pretty deep. They've broken down nicely, so things are growing in them. The main things that start growing here are seeds that are windblown. So this is the area where I did my last video. Got a couple of tree species in the area. This is an ash tree. Now the problem with ash trees are they drop a lot of seeds and their seeds are very viable. So I end up with a lot of ash trees coming up and I just want to get those out of the way. I break this one off so it'll probably grow back. But if you get those out small enough, they're not really a problem. So this one here I got out before it set its root into the mineral soil. So that one I won't have to deal with. I've got a lot of these thistles. Once you get those out, you don't have to deal with them for the rest of the year. Here's my wood chip pile over here that I was working on. This pile here is a little younger, so if I was going to use from this pile, I would use it as a topping because this is really too coarse and it hasn't broken down. It's broken down a little bit underneath. So this one's only been here maybe two years, this particular pile. My pile across here has been down probably four years and it's really well broken down. And this one I don't have a problem mixing that into the soil or using it in my wicking beds. So this material here, once I sift it, right now the surface is a little dry, but once I sift it, I can grow straight into that. 
I'll be doing upcoming videos where I'll talk about my wicking bed ponds. It used to take me anywhere between 40 to 60 hours a year just to string trim the property. Now that I've laid down the wood chips, the effort and the time that it took to do that is starting to pay off. So I've cut the time down to about 20 hours a year. Right now this is the best example of a plant that's growing directly in wood chips that is in my garden. I, I can grow Swiss chard as a perennial here in zone 10A in Southern California. So last year I had a Swiss chard plant that went to seed. It was growing in my refrigerator planter. It went to seed, it dropped its seeds down into the wood chips. Now the Swiss chard that came up here is most of this is still growing in direct wood chips. There's about a 10 inch layer of wood chips here. And the Swiss chard has simply gone to seed. It's germinated inside the wood chips. It's continuing to grow in composted arborist wood chips. So the root of Swiss chard gets huge. Swiss chard and beets are in the same family. They're cultivars of the same wild plant. So beets are grown for the root. Swiss chard is grown for the leaves. The Swiss chard root, some of them have been about 18 inches long and they'll go straight into the mineral soil once they get through the wood chips. Right now I've got a lot of these that I can dig up. They're kind of in the way here. I can transplant them very easily because they're volunteers. They haven't cost me anything. All I do is water this as I water my garden. I've got plenty of transplants to move around my garden and put them wherever I want. I had a lot of Swiss chard growing in other places last year. I've removed a lot of those, so I need to put more in. I hope this video has helped you understand that you can grow in wood chips. You just have to wait until they decompose or break down enough and they turn into nice compost. If I experiment in my yard and it works, that's great. If it fails, I've still learnt something, so that's not a real failure in my mind. If you'd like to see more videos on our channel, that's Robbie and Gary Gardening Easy. So with that, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye.